In today's video, we're going to begin looking at the certain aspects of the zodiac. Previously, we've been looking at astrology and all the individual parts within it, so far the planets, for example. But we all know the zodiac is a larger part of astrology and how it works. As we mentioned previously, it's the map that all the elements kind of exist upon. So we're going to continue that by looking at what the um, zodiac signs are used for. Um, before we look at it as a whole, we're going to break it down because we looked in our last video about the elements and how the elements work and what they really represent. Um, so we're going to look at how the zodiacal signs actually link to the elements because they do. Um, it's an extremely hand-in-hand -hand concept but uh, knowing how the elements works will let you better understand how the zodiacal signs work. Um, we could go through each zodiacal sign individually and have 12 separate videos. However, actually, it's better to understand them in groups of three um, in uh, accordance of the four elements. So we'll make four different videos on each one having three different zodiacal signs. Um, and the best way to do this is to look at, again, what fire represents. So when we look at fire, we saw that it represents uh, the king or the external form of change, an act of change um, outside of whichever um, subject of study you're looking at. So again, if we use the concept of a human being in the body, any change we make outside of the human body can be considered an act of fire as it requires motivation and action to create change to, in either a destructive or creative format because we can make change to destroy or pull something up apart or we can use it to create which is something we'll look at later um, but that's what the act of fire is it's a um, is, is an action or a, a concept of making change externally um, outside of a field of study so for example, on the solar system level, it can be anything outside of the solar system. Um, or in, in terms of the sun, the sun is the body at rest or the subject. So any action uh, in the point of view of the sun, using that as the central aspect, any action the sun can take can be considered a, a fire aspect because it's creating change outside of itself. Whereas uh, just looking at the opposite as a contrast to that, any action which creates inside the sun, so the, um, uh, the continued chemical reaction between hydrogen and helium to create energy is internal, which generates the sun's life, its essence. That's an internal change, which would be um, considered water. Uh, but we'll look at that later. Similarly, in a human being in the mind, any change internally within the body, anything to do with someone, uh, someone's own health or someone's own mental health, a change in the mind is considered an act of water, uh, internal change, but today we look at fire. Now when we're looking at the process of fire, and this is quite interesting really, because when we look at any action or, for example, a story, because a story, when we write a story, it's a, um, it's a complete action, it's something that has a, a complete story from start to finish and has a, a start, an end point and a, a middle. And those three factors are what we're taught at school is when, you know, you write anything, it always has to have a beginning, a middle and an end. Um, obviously, nowadays we have these ongoing, continuous stories, but there is always an end in, in sight. Um, even a book, uh, you know, in a series has an end point to the individual series section. Um, but the goal as a whole always has an end point. There is always a start point. There is always a middle. And anything we do in life, always has these three factors and in fact it's a universal law we can measure through time anything even non-human related has a start a middle and an end so if we look at for example energy energy starts affecting a certain body at rest for example um, rain falling down from the mountains you know it has a start point where the rain hits the top of the mountain the journey is the all the events that happen between the um, rain hitting the top of the mountain, its journeys all the way down through estuaries and streams and so on until it gets to the sea where it's been deposited all of its um, transferred matter and that's the end. And so we can 
generally describe anything in three periods of time, the start, point, the middle and the end. And if we divide those into kind of three um, factors, we have kind of the beginning and close to the center, and then we have the central period, and then we have the point where it starts to move towards the end. So we have, rather than three points and everything in between, we have three, three thirds, three um, portions of that journey, a kind of given journey. And because the zodiac is a given 360 degree cycle, um, when we divide it evenly, we can divide the three parts into equal equal sections. So obviously the zodiac has 12 equal sections, three given to each of the elements. And each one of those three is accordance to a beginning, a middle and end of each of the elements. So these are called the cardinal, fixed and the mutable. Cardinal for the beginning section, fixed for the central section, and mutable for the end section. And these three thirds are the story of any given period of change. So when we're looking at fire and the action of creating change externally, we apply these three concepts. So the cardinal is the beginning of change, the finding out um, and conceiving what actually needs to be changed um, to then make the change. So it's the and a thought behind the change, the process behind the change before change is applied because often we need to know what we're going to change before we set off changing it. But the thought of changing is part of the process. It's the planning stage, effectively, of the change. Whereas the fixed part, the central part of fire, is the actual action of change. Um, and that's when change takes place. Whereas the mutable part is actually the end of change, it's the reflection upon what has been changed, because we're still changing. It's just the after effects, the tail effects of what happens. Change still occurs, but almost like an after ripple effect, it's the smaller changes that come from the big change, the event. So for example, if we look at kind of post-history and wars, for example, um, like in the time of the Egyptians, so the conquest era was an act of change from the pharaohs. The king and the pharaoh being the prime example of change because they were very expansionist at the time. So when they were looking at conquering new lands, they would look at, right, we need to decide which lands we need to conquer and why, what's the priority and how we're going to do this. That is change being planned and is an act of change. It's the build up of it. And that is the cardinal effect. It's getting everything ready and in place, getting the army ready, getting the weapons ready, getting the tactics ready, so that when the time comes, change can be applied. The fixed section is the actual war or the conquest itself, the taking over of the city, the area, claiming the land. And the mutable effects is the post-event or the post-war. It's the little changes that occur after to solidify the hold on the land, to claim it, to change um, the structure of the kind of culture there so that the people are now under the rule of the Egyptians for example of the pharaoh and it's those little changes that tail off that then go into something else and that's the mutable and that's the same with all things when we do an external change in our lives those are the three things we do we plan we act and then we watch the effects of that act unfold now, these three aspects are given the three um, zodiacal forms. Uh, Cardinal is Aries, fixed is Leo, mutable is Sagittarius. So when we see the concept of fire, and then we see the three stages of that concept in action, and then we just see the three kind of pointed out areas of the zodiac that these apply to, the three parts of the zodiac make a, a lot more sense than if we just... When, when you see in astrology people try and describe what each of the zodiacal signs are, it, it really doesn't connect to us. It's a lot of information based on concepts of, well, if this happens then it means this and it could be this and it could affect this part of your life. And there's a lot of if, buts and maybes. And there's a lot of... Because we're not applying it in true context, we're just looking at how each of the planets operate in each one of those stages. 
But if we don't understand what the, each of the aspects of a zodiac mean separately, according to the elements they belong to, then how can we possibly understand all the con continuous variations within that? And so we look at the three sections of the cardinal fixed and mutable in relation to the action of external change of fire. And that gives us an actual pure concept of what these points of the zodiac means. And we're going to look at how they actually work later in a later video once we've explained each section individually. But hopefully that brings a little bit of light and a bit of understanding to what the three parts of the zodiac are in relation to fire and Aries, Leo, and Sagittarius. And that gives us a bit more of a clue of astrology and what it represents. And it, it, it's more manageable in our minds if we know why something works and we understand what it is, rather than just working out what in each individual is and not really knowing how it works or what it's for. Now, there is actually a fourth part to fire, uh, and this is something we'll go over in all the elements. And it's a hidden element or hidden aspect to the element. As we're told in all things, but everything has a passive and an active phase in equal measure. Uh, and that's the same in the universe. We have an equal amount of expanding and contracting energy at all given times. And this is true of the elements and the zodiac. So we have three thirds uh, or three parts of the zodiac. And the cardinal fixed and mutable Aries, Leo and Sagittarius are considered the active stage of fire. And it's like a condensed version of fire where fire is most active, it's most volatile, it's in its ascendance, it's working and being, you know, effective. However, if we apply the Taoist situation where actually fire is always in continuous motion and action, but sometimes it's just in stronger amounts than others, we look at the fact that when the other three elements of earth, water, fire, and the other nine zodiacal forms are in ascendance and being used, Fire still exists, but it's in its dormant state, it's in its passive phase. So when we have, we have three zodiacal forms of active fire, and we have nine zodiacal forms of passive, because we have the same amount of energy, but compressed into three parts, or rather than spread over nine. So when it's spread over nine, imagine water. If we compact water into a smaller space, it looks more active and becomes higher in pressure, is more potential energy. Whereas if we put it over a greater expansive area such as a lake, it becomes stagnant, it becomes dormant and un unaffected. It's like a low heat, whereas a high heat in a compressed form is more active, more motivated, and so has more effect. But it's still present, we still have heat, or the absence of heat in the Arctic. Heat still exists in a form, it's just at its most dormant stage. So actually we have a passive form, so we have cardinal fixed mutable, but then we have a passive form of fire which actually exists at the same time as all of the other nine uh, parts of the zodiac in turn. So we actually have four stages uh, to fire and a hidden, hidden one at that. But the one people mainly look at is the cardinal fixed mutable because it's when fire is most active. But we have to remember that fire exists even when it's not active. Um, so that's the fourth kind of hidden zodiacal sign, which actually encompasses nine all at the same time. So I hope that's shed a little light on uh, those three parts of the zodiac and what the four. So we have cardinal at the beginning, which is areas of fire. They're fixed, uh, which is the um, meat or the um, uh, the middle uh, of the story for fire, the um, active change itself, the event. And then we have the after effects, the end of the story for fire in the mutable and Sagittarius. Aries, Leo, Sagittarius, the three parts of fire all work together uh, within the universe to um, demonstrate how active external change works. So I hope you've enjoyed. We'll look at the rest of the elements in the next video, but please subscribe, please like and follow our channel. So thank you very much and bye bye. In today's video, we're going to begin looking at the certain aspects of the zodiac. Obviously, we've been looking at astrology and all the individual parts within it, so far the planets, for example. But we all know the zodiac is a larger part of astrology and how it works. As we mentioned previously, it's the map 
that all the elements kind of exist upon. So we're going to continue that by looking at what the um, zodiac signs are used for. Um, before we look at it as a whole, we're going to break it down because we looked in our last video about the elements and how the elements work 